Well, I will say, first off, thank you and uh, welcome to the Commercial Energy Storage Opportunity Webinar in 2023 and beyond. This is such a hot topic in our market and really a huge opportunity for those who are willing to be bold and increase their knowledge and offerings in these areas. It can definitely be an intimidating topic, but that is exactly why we put these webinars together. It's to help you pull back the curtain on these products and services and help you grow your business into this potential blue ocean opportunity. A little housekeeping up front. Uh, we will run for about 50 to 60 minutes for the actual webinar. At that time, we will also cut to a Q&A afterwards. And I've mentioned it before, but I will mention it again. If you do have any questions, please put it into the Q&A chat at the bottom. My name is Wade Allen. I am the National Technical Manager here at Supply Partners. And similar to our podcast, The Solar Coaster, which will be dropping next week. Um, I have with me, although albeit in the background today, my partner in crime, Andrew Thompson. He is our senior technical guru here at Supply Partners. He is in this today and he is running the Q&A chat, so he will try to answer anything that, um, any questions he can right away. But if you do have something for the attendees directly, we will save it to the end and make sure we go over each one if possible. Uh, today is brought to you by Supply Partners. Uh, we are a 100% owned and operated Australian distributor that prides itself on not just being a box mover. We bring technical and sales support to all of our customers, and we have been distributing energy and solar equipment around Australia for the last 10 years now. We have offices and warehouses in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Darwin, and Townsville, and we are continuously evolving our product and service offering with forecasted trends in the market by doing stringent reviews and research so that you can be assured if we offer it, it's not only compliant and up to standard, but it is extremely well supported by both our manufacturing partners and supply partners. This today is similar to back five years ago in 2017 well, six years ago now, I suppose, when installers were looking to break into the commercial PV market over 30 kilowatt. And it was supply partners who developed the first ever PLC, which used native software to communicate with inverters for both export control and network protection. And we sold out conferences all across Australia, teaching installers such as yourselves how to integrate this into your offering now some of those customers are doing megawatt, multi-megawatt installs. And today we are bringing a new, un, taking the curtain away from this new market of commercial energy storage. We are also about to launch our new energy training program, which incorporates the latest CEC and NETCC programs, including site survey and design for salespeople. This will be launching at Smart Energy Conference in just a couple weeks. And the last exciting addition to our lineup that I'll mention is our alignment with Green Peak Energy who offer the most attractive financing PPAs in Australia to help you get more jobs across the line and have guaranteed savings for your customers. But back to today, Supply Partners proudly brings you this webinar with our manufacturing partners that have been strategically chosen to help you bring value to this very relevant topic of conversation. We will not only be discussing new and exciting products for commercial energy storage that you can start quoting right away, but we have partnered with Orchestra. They are an Australian software company that have developed a game-changing tool for you to be able to bring accurate, authentic, mathematical-based options to the feasibility of your presentations and offerings. It will truly blow you away. So with us today, we have James Alston, the co-founder and co-CEO of Orchestra. We also have Craig Hunter, the sales manager from Power Plus Energy. Lindsay Hart, commercial director from Cell Electronic Australia. Simon Dew, the commercial solutions manager from SunGrow Australia. And as mentioned, Andrew Thompson, our senior technical guru here at Supply Partners, who will also pop in at the end and talk about a few other products that will soon be available in this space. 
The timeline for today will look like this. James will start off by giving us a 15 to 20 minute presentation showing you the power of orchestra software and give you some nuggets on who to target, what to look for, and how to add undeniable value to your offerings. We will then move to our manufacturing partners with a five to 10 minute presentation by each, Power Plus, Selectronic, and SunGrow. And after that, AT will pop in at the end and talk about some other exciting products. And then we'll move to our Q&A, where you have the chance to ask your presenters all your questions. So without further ado, our first presenter of the day, I will pass the torch now over to James Alston, co-CEO and co-founder of Orchestra. James. Thanks very much, Wade. Um, so I'd like to start off uh, by talking a little bit more to the why. Why are we here to talk about batteries? Um, because, you know, it, batteries, of course, are an exciting new technology, but it's also there's a, there's a reason why solar installers need to be thinking about batteries in Australia. And the, the, one of the biggest reasons is that over the next 10 years, we're actually expecting the solar industry to contract on a megawatt by megawatt basis. So you're going to have a lot of installers out there all trying to compete with systems in this commercial space um, and behind the meter space generally, but in a contracting market. So you're going to have to start as a solar installer thinking outside the box of what you're going to do next. Batteries is one option, EV charges is another. Um, we're going to be supporting both of these technologies in our tool over the next little while. But we're here to talk about batteries today, so let's focus on that. The, uh, the battery market in, in comparison to the solar market is expected to expand massively. So it's at a very low base today in terms of behind the meter storage that actually been deployed. But you know, under the, um, the step change scenario that we're looking at, which is considered the most likely by, the, uh, by AEMO, CSIRO and green energy markets, is that we'll be at you know, two gigawatts of behind the meter storage being deployed per annum from around uh, the, end of the end of this decade. And we're gonna ramp up pretty aggressively over this next little forward period. So providers that are in this space that are trying to um, you know, continue to compete really need to be starting to think now about what are their solutions gonna be and what, and what you're gonna to offer to your customers. So at Orchestra, we are able to model lots of different solutions, but we kind of camp them into two different bins. So we talk about simple battery stacks um, and advanced battery stacks. And these are, um, so when you deploy a battery, a battery is gonna be, um, is gonna have revenue and that revenue can come from exclusively behind the meter, which is our simple value stack, or it can include battery value, which is in front of the meter as well. So many people would be familiar on this call with things like the, the Victorian big battery and the Tesla big battery in South Australia. That is what we call a battery that is, you know, deriving most all of its value from front of the meter revenue streams. So that's, you know, wholesale market arbitrage and contingency FCAS. You don't need to be jumping all the way to that in the beginning, but you need to start having an eye to thinking about whether, you know, building batteries with with value stacks of this nature. And you can have simple battery stacks which are exclusively behind the meter values. So that would be, you know, solar self consumption in a residential context, um, de demand charge management and time of use arbitrage as you know, common behind the, va uh, behind the meter value that you, will, um, that you will see out there available to build um, battery business cases off. This is not equal in all parts of Australia, right? So um, what you're gonna see is that where, you, um, where you're trying to deploy your batteries in Australia, there'll be a fairly wide range of, of uh, sort of um, financial outcomes for each different part of Australia. Queensland on the whole is, is what we you know, view as probably the most interesting market in Australia. Um, New South Wales probably being the next most interesting, um, followed by you know, Tasmania, Powercore and South Australia. Um, and even within these states and um, these regions, you're going to have pretty wide variance on the, um, the range of different solutions that you're actually going to see. So while these, these rules of where you're probably going to find the most interesting solutions um, you know, are kind of directionally correct, what you actually need to be thinking about is um, modelling each and every site because there's going to be a difference between you know, the load profile for the site, the tariff that that load profile is exposed to, the amount of solar that's been installed, um, and all of that will feed into the economics of a, of a battery and uh, where you're gonna, whether you're gonna have a, a solution which is viable or not. So lots of complexity to, consi to consider 
And it's not something that you really want to be doing, you know, sitting down in front of an Excel spreadsheet. You want to be doing something that's really fast and easy to use. So that's where Orchestra comes in. So we built this software with the explicit intent of trying to massively speed up the whole process of feasibility for um, for pro projects in the uh, in the new energy space. So this is an all singing, all dancing battery modeling software, but lots of our users are just using it for solar because it's got a very, very powerful tariff modeler at the core of the tool. And so for commercial opportunities, there's really nothing else that beats it in terms of you know providing these fast, accurate outcomes. Um, one of the main features of this tool is that you can model uh, 150, sorry, 250 different uh, uh, potential solutions in any one go. So you can, you know, model say 20 different uh, solar systems and uh, 10 different battery systems, or 10 different solar systems, 10 different battery systems, and a side adjustment. And you'll be getting to very, very large potential numbers of scenarios. But this allows you to like very, very quickly, you know, get solutions to all of this, literally within a minute from a, um, for runtime to actually get all these results. And you can start having really quite um, valuable conversations with customers around the range of potential solutions that are available to them. Um, so we can use this software, um, and we've done it, used it for, for this presentation today, to kind of show you like the types of solutions that you might be able to, to get both um, front and behind the meter in terms of those simple valley, um, valley stacks and, and advanced valley stacks for batteries. So let's look at some, an example of a simple battery valley stack. So I've um, modeled this site. I've put it in um, Queensland, which is where we are today. I've um, given it a, a, a low profile, which is scaled to 180 megawatt hours, and I've, um, I've got 100 kilowatts of solar that's already been installed on that site, of which when you look at that, around 50% has been exported. So whoever installed this system probably oversized it at the time or, um, you know, things change. It might have been the right size when it was initially installed, um, but now it's actually oversized and, you know, the amount of export is, is probably too much for really for this site and the, the return's not as good as it could be. And it's sitting right on the threshold of um, being a large site as well. So if it was able to get its load, um, uh, net load under 100 megawatt hours on this site, it would fall into a small business, um, uh, you know, network tariff um, camp. This site also has a re um, uh, reliability requirements. So I've, um, you know, set this up as a food processor, which really can't go off, you know, can't lose its connection to the to the grid and is facing issues there. So we've added that into the potential opportunities of the site. And we've modeled uh, 15 different solar system sizes from uh, nothing right through to 140 kilowatts. And these are two hour batteries. And we've considered a range of different uh, potential control profiles. So looking at demand, time of use and backup power, as well as a tariff change opportunity. So even just within this like one Set, set up, which didn't take me particularly long. I've got 30 um, solutions considered in one setup and another 30 considered in the next setup. And we're able to, to actually get a range of different financial outcomes for this, for this battery. So here's the kind of high level results or top line results that came out of this particular piece of analysis. And straight away that we can see that is if you approach uh, commercial batteries with the same approach that you might have with residential batteries where it's all around solar self-consumption and time of use arbitrage, you're going to fail, right? So the the um, providers that are out there that are trying to sell on that basis, the financial returns really don't stack up. You don't get a sufficient amount of value generated by those projects to really make it work. There are ex exceptions. So you may have cases where you do have a customer that has a really extreme time of use tariff and we have heard of some some examples of that recently but it's very much at the margins it's not something that you can universally apply across um, a range of opportunities if you now add um, demand charge reduction for this particular project we've jumped immediately gone from a project that's um, you know that's not making any money to a project that's starting to make some money and so you know we've got a, a pretty low IRR here it's not particularly exciting We'd expect a range of IRRs for this particular area. This is in uh, set up in Energex to probably be, you know, anywhere from five to fifteen percent IRR, depending on the on the sort of the relationship between the tariff and the um, and the low profile. So, you know, we can see that we can start to get a pretty um, reasonable opportunity by reducing demand. Now, if you start to think outside the box and you start to think, okay, what else can we do with this battery um, beyond just um, time of 
you know, time of use, solar self-consumption and demand charge reduction, what, what could we do? So an interesting one here is that we might be able to actually change the tariff. We might be able to go from being a large customer to a small customer and, uh, you know, completely remove the, the demand charge component that's been um, seen by that customer. So they will no longer receive, you know, a, a bill which will have an, a demand charge um, on it. And you can bank all of those savings. So with a relatively small battery, we've gone and um, taken some of that export energy and we've used that to offset their import. And, and now we've got a project that stacks up, right? 12.6% um, is actually looking like a, a really solid project. However, if we look even further afield and we start to think about the kinds of savings that you might um, gain from um, providing backup power to a site. So, you know, in this particular case, I've put a price of $2,000 for each blackout, um, again, for, you know, an instance of a blackout and $1,000 per hour for the, for the improvement of the, um, of, uh, or keeping the, the site live, which is pretty realistic um, types of, of figures here. We jump the IRR up to 57%. So it's really like a no-brainer at this point to, to head down the battery route. And so when you're looking at um, simple battery value stacks or any, any battery value stacks, you need to be thinking about how do you start to add different things on top of each other to, to build the business case and to really make it a, an absolute no-brainer for, for a customer to proceed with this. So this is a simple value um, stack where it's exclusively behind the meter. But let's just now talk about what you can do with advanced value stacks. And this is where you start to bring in front of the meter revenue streams in as well. So I've got a site here. I've um, also, again, in Brisbane, I've got a larger site. I've given it the same um, demand tariff as that we had before. It's a pretty healthy one. It's a nice one to, to underpin, the value like, underpin the value stack. I've got an undersized solar system on here. So it's a 30 kilowatt system. Um, and we're now looking at what can we do if we add some solar and a battery um, to this site. And I've considered a range of different um, value um, stacks in this when I'm running this system. So I've got, you know, five times 200, um, uh, sorry, five times 22 uh, different um, potential solutions. So 110 solutions considered all at the same time. And if we look at the outcomes at this particular project, we can see how the um, you know, building a, a dense value stack actually starts to really make the, the battery economics start to shine. So starting off with, um, you know, just adding your solar, we're going to have, um, you know, we're going to improve, um, you know, the, um, the situation for the customer quite well. We've got a, you know, $91.6 uh, thousand dollar um, NPV on this pr project with a 19.4% IRR. If we add a battery, um, the NPV stays the same, the IRR goes down a bit, so the battery's not quite breaking even, but we have increased the investment and a customer may see this as, as a valuable investment nonetheless with an IRR like this. So if you're wanting as an installer to just to build your revenues up a little bit, this might be a way of kind of like sneaking one in. But now if we start to add the front of meter revenue streams onto this project, we can see that things really start to light up. Light up. So just adding the wholesale market arbitrage into this particular opportunity, we can see that the NPV um, more than doubles on this project. And we've also been able to increase the size of the battery. So what I've shown here is actually the, the maximum um, net present value for a particular opportunity. So this is kind of a way of like um, comparing apples and apples with, with uh, when you're comparing different types of projects. And the best opportunity um, when you've got this value stack here is to actually double the size of the, of the battery. When we add contingency FCAS, which is you know, a value stream that you'd have to access um, alongside an aggregator, um, you can increase the battery size again and the, um, and the net present value jumps up even more um, from adding this um, into, the, into the mix. So when you're um, thinking about these opportunities, um, you can certainly start with, uh, you know, simple behind the meter value, but as your portfolio of batteries um, grows and you get more batteries into the, um, into the market, you might look to um, come back around and start uh, adding additional value onto these by exposing them to the market, um, potentially increasing the size of the battery, and, um, and you can continue to build your revenues with that, with that customer. So what are some kind of rules of thumb that you can think about when you're looking for these battery opportunities? 
Um, we'd start off by identifying customers that have grid, grid reliability drivers and innovation drivers. These customers are going to usually have a higher willingness to pay. And as we saw in the analysis, um, you can get some pretty tidy returns when you start to think about more elaborate um, battery value stacks um, and ones that include backup power. And where possible, you're looking in regional locations. So, you know, Ergon, uh, Essential Energy, um, you know, uh, PowerCore, TAS Networks, SAPN, these um, networks all have very healthy um, demand tariffs just by the nature of their, of their networks. So yeah, finding sites with high demand tariffs, um, particularly ones with more than $15 a kilowatt hour rolling monthly and with a time of use demand component um, will pretty much um, you know, get, you know, nearly guarantee you a simple behind the meter value stack. Um, finding sites with peaky loads where you can use the battery to, to flatten that load and reduce the demand. But it always depends on an alignment between the load and the tariff as to whether that's going to occur. And where possible, um, start to build uh, front of meter value streams um, into, the, into your value stack for your batteries. So if you follow all these rules of thumb, you'll find projects that work most of the time. But ultimately speaking, um, what you really need to be doing is using a piece of software like Orchestra, um, as that will be able to help you identify projects really quickly and easily. You know, you can really do this analysis um, and look at a range of opportunities, you know, within anywhere between 15 minutes and an hour, and you've covered it all. We've got it to the point where it's, uh, it's um, as efficient to use that you can actually um, do these types of analysis live with a customer and help them understand their different opportunities. So thanks very much um, for that and for listening to this. Um, you can start a free trial of our software um, at any time, um, 21 days, and um, from that we can um, have a chat to you about your battery opportunities and how we can help. Excellent. Thank you, James. Yes, I, I encourage everybody to, to go to orchestra.energy and sign up for that free trial and really give this a, uh, a few weeks and a lot, a bit of your time so that you can run through all the different scenarios and all the different options that it have. It, it is such a powerful piece of software. It cannot even be closely <laughs> represented in that 15 minute presentation. So yes, please, please go to orchestra with a K dot energy and start your free trial there and give that a crack. Now we will move over to some of the solutions that are available right now. For, for you to, and by the way, all these solutions are already built into Orchestra, so you just have to choose them. Um, we will start with Craig Hunter. Craig is the sales manager at Power Plus Energy. They are an Australian owned and operated battery manufacturer down in Melbourne, Australia. And Craig, are you ready to roll, my friend? I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, off you go. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Wade. Um, Craig Hunter, Sales Manager at Power Plus Energy. Today, I'm going to talk to you uh, about some escape series. Some of you guys that may have spoken to some of our team, we relaunched these as a soft launch back in October last year, and we're now pricing them up in the market and ready for dispatch over the next few months. So I will talk today uh, about the uh, two models I'm going to talk about, more detail on the Escape 20. We have some detail on the Escape 30 as well because they're slightly different. Uh, however, these are our commercial-based offerings and they sort of uh, tie in well with the, the topic that we're talking about today. So the Escape 20 comes in a standard platform of 28.8 and 60, 28 .8 kilowatts of output and 64 kilowatt hours of storage. However, they are built as a modular solution that can be scaled to uh, essentially as large as, not as large as you want to go, but essentially as a custom solution up to 1.8 megawatts or 8 megawatt hours of storage, uh, of storage capacity. So it's quite a large solution. There are two different ways that the system can be integrated into the uh, into the PV. I guess you could say there's AC coupling uh, on the uh, on the AC side of the BES, where the BES is in control of the AC side of the uh, the AC coupled PV, and that was means that we can scale the system there to about 172 kilowatts and around the 400 kilowatt hours uh, of storage. And when we look at DC coupling of the PV to the systems uh, for the solution, we're now up at around the sort of 1.4 megawatt of capacity and around the sort of four meg three three to four megawatt hours of storage. So we're getting up there in quite a large amount of size. They come in a indoor solution 
uh, IP21 rated an outdoor solution as well, IP54, for when you want the BESS or the AC battery to actually take control of the PV. We're compatible at this stage with uh, SMA and Fronius inverters uh, for if you want control via communications. The products come with your standard sort of inputs and outputs that you expect with these uh, these, these products uh, if today, and they come out with virtual power plant ready, so they're VPP ready to go uh, for any of the sort of uh, uh, revenue streams that are out there. The beauty feel about this product is it's uh, almost one product suits all. Uh, it's both on-grid and off-grid capable, so it can be used in both applications. As I mentioned before, it's scalable by purchasing multiples of these cabinets for the one application, which then again makes it future-proof because if the system is not large enough today, by essentially adding more storage later, uh, the system's uh, going to uh, obviously suit the need. And they're easy to maintain. So they're actually designed with a low MTTR in the back end. So the idea is that uh, if there is a problem on site, uh, it's very quickly to, quick to resolve. And they suit a massively diverse range of, uh, of applications. There, if you know, if you guys that don't know about Power Plus Energy, we're an Australian made, uh, an Australian company down in Victoria. So the products that I'm talking about today, uh, the batteries uh, that, that are in the product, and also the storage solutions, they're made locally down in Victoria here. So if you guys ever want to come down and have a chat and have a factory tour, you're more than welcome to come up and come out and see the products being made. And we employ about 80 people uh, at this point in time, and we have a full technical base team uh, and BDM team around the country to support you on pre-sales and on your after-sales support. So feel free to give us a call at any stage. When you look at the products on uh, in, in a quick overview uh, of some of the the, in, the integrations of it, so it's grid or generator interactive for charging or both, uh, depending on the application you choose to use them in. The actual loads are isolated from the fluctuations of the generator and the grid uh, due to the nature of the uh, the inverter technology that's used in the product. You can use. AC or DC coupled PV, for people who don't understand the difference, one's connected on the AC bus, one's connected on the DC bus. And with the AC coupled PV that's connected to the load output side of this product, uh, it can be controlled um, via frequency control or frequency ramping uh, in a off-grid or an islanded situation where the grid may fail. So the PV can remain connected when the grid has failed. There's remote monitoring for these products, so remote monitoring for fleet management user, uh, for us guys to actually uh, assist you guys with anything on site. And there's also third party controls, APIs and uh, VPN tunneling that you can do. So there's no end of the sort of connection side that you can do here. We've chosen to partner with a brand called Switched In for all of our remote communications. So another great Australian company. Uh, if you guys don't know who they are, uh, feel free to go out and Google them. You can export from the AC or DC coupled PV when you're in a grid connected application. And you can also export from the batteries should you be allowed to by utility. And it's true UPS capability is uh, what we're doing with the product at the moment. So it's true UPS capable. So when we talk about the inverter technology I was saying before, where we get the UPS capability and also the isolated loads, and uh, one of the beautiful things about that is that your load is totally isolated from any generator or grid fluctuations. So you're getting pure, clean energy delivered to those loads on the output side of the product. The product, a lot of people that are used to uh, systems out in the out in remote areas, uh, when a system goes down, it can actually be a bit of a nightmare to get these systems up and going uh, if you need to travel to site. The product has what we class as a black start capability built into it. So should the batteries uh, have a deep discharge, uh, which can happen in some situations, especially in blackout situations, and the batteries go to sleep, by sim simply plugging in a generator and starting or for simply turning the grid on, or when the sun comes up, if you've got a, a DC coupled version of our products, it will automatically wake the batteries up uh, and the system starts charging and powering. So it takes the onerous out of some of the management side of the system. The product allows 100% uh, phase balancing, especially when you're looking at uh, grids that are very small or generators uh, as well, when you're connected on the input side of a product, uh, it allows phase balancing. So because we're a true online UPS product, what happens is your load is totally isolated from the incoming AC source. So your load could have a 10 kilowatt load on one phase, 30 kilowatt load on one another phase, and a, a five kilowatt load on the other phase. What the grid will see is 100% balanced uh, load across each phases. So the system balances out, uh, which is a benefit to utilities and a better benefit to the longevity of your generators. 
suits all weather installations. So it's an indoor version and an outdoor version. The outdoor version is for a full sun uh, installation. It's insulated, has uh, dual skin. Uh, it's fan force cooling, or you can also order the air conditioned version. So it suits all humid uh, and dry environments across Australia. Speak to us about our custom solutions. So as I said, we can take this product to about 1.8 megawatts in output size, eight megawatt hours of storage. Uh, we can do true uh, bi-directional or single directional UPS uh, modules in this product if you want a true UPS uh, style product. Uh, one phase, two phase or three phase applications, we can add rectifiers, whatever you need to do. And one of the big, event, big benefits, we can create microgrids with this product as well with lots of nodes hanging off of it. And it suits the utility scale. When we look at scalability and configurations, I was saying before, in if you wanted to have um, controlled AC coupled uh, PV connected to the to the buses where we're in control of it, uh, you can go to a maximum of six cabinets of this, and that's where we sort of scale out at the 172 kilowatts around the 400 uh, kilowatt hours of storage. However, when we get to the, the more sizable systems, we can scale up to 48 of these cabinets connected together. And that's how we get up to that sort of 1.8 megawatts in size uh, and around the eight megawatt hours of storage. When we look at applications, I mentioned it before, there's a UPS application. It's a true UPS, so you can use it for all those lovely applications. Diesel offset, a lot of people think that when someone's got a diesel generator, you need to add PV to it, but simply adding a diesel a generator, uh, some battery storage can definitely return, reduce your return on investment. Um, and their, their run costs on that on the generator. Off-grid applications, uh, one of the, the, the key strengths of this product, we can be used in microgrids uh, in on and off-grid applications as well. When talking to the utilities about this, the utilities are quite excited. It can sort to suit the utility applications. We're trying to sow a lot of seeds out there for a lot of the installers out there to take a, an opportunity of, and we're VPP ready. So I'll just touch a little bit on the Escape 30 series. The Escape 30 series is very similar in lots of ways to the Escape 20. Um, this one is a little bit different in size. It's 29.7 kilowatts output, still the same sort of kilowatt hours of storage of 64 uh, kilowatt hours of storage. And what we can do with this is scale it up to one megawatt clusters and uh, four four on-grid applications. So I mentioned before, it's very, very similar. So it's an indoor and an outdoor version. One of the key differences to this product is it's only a grid interactive product, not for off-grid applications. And it doesn't have UPS functionality, it has EPS functionality in the back end. So what is EPS functionality? Essentially, the system will shut down in a blackout, in the event of a blackout, but then will power back up after 10 seconds and power your essential loads. Um, no solar can remain connected during, that, during this process, but it's definitely going to give you an extended blackout. With the Escape 20, the solar can remain connected, giving you the extended blackout and the true off-grid capabilities. So 27 cabinets on this product can be clustered together uh, to create a cluster, and then multiple clusters uh, can be rolled across the network wherever you see fit. The applications, EPS functionality, as I mentioned before, usual grid sort of applications, your energy shifting, peak shaving, time of use. Uh, once again, utility grade applications and they're VPP ready. We've tried to listen to the market with these products, uh, with the Escape 20 and the Escape 30, to have an understanding about what some of the hurdles are with people. With these systems, what people want to be able to do is to easily diagnose a system uh, via remote monitoring in the event of any problem or have to upgrade it. Um, they've wanted improved efficiencies on site. So these are very, very quick to install. They're designed to be rapidly deployed. And also with all of the, the, the components inside, they're fully hot swappable. So when there is an issue, it's very easy to, uh, to swap out. So that's in a nutshell, in a, in a very quick 10 minute presentation, the Escape 20 and Escape 30. We're doing training at the moment around the country uh, and that sort of stuff. So feel free to uh, touch base with us and uh, we can tell you some more. So thank you very much. Fantastic, thank you, Craig. That was, that was excellent. And again, if you have any questions for Craig or for James, please put them in the Q&A and we will get to them at the end. And now we are going to move over to Lindsay Hart. Lindsay Hart is the commercial director from Selectronic. Selectronic, I'm sure you've all heard of. They are as also down in Melbourne, and they have been around since Adam was a boy. And Lindsay, if you're ready to share and get rolling, my friend. Yes, I am, mate. Okay. Take it away, my friend. Uh, thank you very much, and thanks for everyone coming along to uh, have a listen to what we all have to say today. Peak lopping demand management on the grid. Um, it's such an interesting topic and one that's uh, in some areas very, very well understood. In some areas, 
perhaps a little bit more education is required. So a little bit about our company first, if you're not familiar with us. Uh, Cellatronic, uh, I think as Wade suggested, we've been around for a little while, 59 years this year. So look out, there is a huge party coming next year for 60 year, years in business. But uh, since that very day one, we have always been, and at this stage, we're always intending to remain a family-owned company and Australian manufacturer. So like Craig said as well, if you are in the Melbourne area, please Give us a hoy, come down and have a look at our manufacturing plant. Uh, that manufacturing plant is something we're proud of. We're about to be a lot more prouder, prouder of it, if we can use that terminology, with a, a very, very large investment that the company is making to basically take our manufacturing to the, the next level. Uh, from a global point of view, we are looking to be right up there on par with the very best in breed when it comes to manufacturing. So, of course, all our design, support, everything is done from the very minute we say, hey, we've got an idea right through to when it goes out the door and service, the sold and service is all done right here in Melbourne. So, we've got about 4,400 square metres that you can see there in our uh, one turn of south, just uh, about half an hour east of Melbourne. So, please make sure you uh, give us a hoy if you'd like to have a look at that. I want to just concentrate on one part of the market today. I, we could go on for, for who knows how long talking about all the different ways that we can actually provide energy storage, but we just really wanted to hone in in the time that we've got on one part of the market, and that is peak lopping or grid augmentation. And doing a bit of researching yesterday in preparation for today, just looking at Ergon Energex, and we find about at least 28 different tariffs and understanding these tariffs and this isn't meant to be the slide isn't meant to be one that you can read necessarily but the idea being that there's a lot of different tariffs out there that will determine whether a battery storage system could be worthwhile or not and as James pointed out a little bit earlier on there's lots of different ways that we can look at these types of applications so that's just the ergon and energex that we're able to find and we start looking across the whole of Australia there are literally hundreds of different types of tariffs and some of these tariffs can appear to be one thing on the surface but when you start digging they can be uh, can be very very different so it's great to see that uh, orchestra have put together something to help you navigate that little that little minefield um, so what does this actually mean to to your customer well it can mean a, a number of things for instance we've seen situations where a new build may have a restricted grid supply or it may just be prohibitively expensive to increase that supply to a subdivision or to a, to a property. Supply capacity may be restricted in business growth, and that can mean that the, because the grid can't be upgraded or it's just simply uneconomical to do so. We have that very same situation here at uh, Celotronic at our manufacturing plant where we don't have a big enough transformer supply basically to the to the property and to upgrade that it's it's ripping car parks up it's do, it's just not economical it might also mean that your customer is going to be charged at a higher rate for exceeding a certain supply capacity it may be that the tariff that they've been offered looks good in the normal day to day and the uh, the charge may be quite competitive but it will be capped at a certain capacity should you go over that you would be stung a significantly higher charge and that may be applying to the whole billing month or billing cycle and of course time of use charges that we're seeing coming up now across Australia as well again doing some uh, research on this just to get the latest we're seeing some time of use peak time is is when it's not as it was two three years ago of course with an oversupply of PV during the day, that's changed the rules a little bit now. And some of the tariffs are, are really being structured to say, well, um, we actually really don't want you to be exporting. What do we want you to be doing instead? So DNSPs, they have a business to run, of course, and they're going to try and manipulate that costing structure to uh, to get basically what they want. And that's, a, I guess, the way we, we all have to look at businesses a little bit. What can we do to maximise? Here is an example that we found. This is Origin Energy, uh, where they've got a 15 cent uh, supply, a, a kilowatt hour. But if you go over that demand charge that they'll stipulate in this tariff, 82.7 cents before it goes uh, before GST, and a fairly high metering uh, service charge per day. So 
what is it that we can do about this from a technical solutions point of view if what we're looking to do basically is to perhaps limit the draw from the mains to a certain value so we don't get into those supply capacity charges and avoiding peak demand charges and perhaps also just making sure that we can actually provide the amount of energy or power to a site that is required. So what we've got in front of you there is how we would go about this purely from a commercial three-phase peak lopping. So we've got our three-phase building in the middle there, which hopefully uh, does look like some sort of commercial building. I think it does. Um, and we've got some PV here. Whatever PV, we don't really care. But what about if we have to take control of our energy flow when the PV is not there. The PV it may be at night or it could be simply that we've got a, a very dull day and the PV's contribution is not sufficient. And this is where we can add some SP Pro bidirectional inverters. Did I say Australian made? Made in Melbourne before? before? I might have said that, I think. And basically we're going to add some storage onto the three phases of the system. So effectively, let's just say for a simple uh, design rule, we don't want to take any more than 100 kilowatts or we can't take any more than 100 kilowatts from that grid supply. Let's say we want 120 kilowatts, then what we're going to do is we're going to add a 20 kilowatt bidirectional inverter, the SP Pro, onto each phase to increase our capacity. So the blue little donut there is a CT and we've got a contact in between the bidirectional inverter and the grid supply. Effectively, when the draw from the grid, the net draw from the grid is under 100 kilowatts, we're going to be charging the battery. If it is over 100 kilowatts, we're going to be discharging the battery into the load to supplement what the load needs without exceeding that 100 kilowatts from the grid. So this has the, the uh, great flexibility and be able to achieve an increased supply and avoiding some of those charges that we, we've talked about a little bit earlier. The nice thing about this system is we could add another set of three phase inverters, another set as well. We could go up to 240 kilowatts of continuous power. The fact that the SP Pro is an industrial grade product rather than a domestic grade product, it suits this kind of application extremely well because what we're trying to do is we have to, man we have to make sure that when that power is needed, it's delivered because if it's not delivered, your return on investment is going to take a real dive south and that's just not acceptable in what we're trying to do here. So up to 240 kilowatts in that situation, it would be a 120 volt DC system and we could use the Power Plus lithium batteries or we could use the new Cellatronic Select Cell lithium batteries to achieve that solution. We don't care how much solar you have in this system. It's totally separate. It's going to be self-consumed as normal and export if uh, required and if allowed. The battery storage system will simply be looking at, well, what do we need to do for that grid? What have we got to keep it within what working tolerances? Again, this is what we call parallel insertion, but we also have the ability with this parallel insertion where we could add uh, backup loads. So it might be that we've got a factory and we want to make sure that in a a grid failure, we back up, say, the offices or from some lighting, et cetera. And in this situation, we would be running to the capacity of the inverter. So if you've got 20 kilowatt inverters on each phase, then we've got a 20 kilowatt potential battery backup into those loads. So the size of the load is uh, going to be determining how long is the grid off for, or perhaps how long do we have to sustain more than the 100 kilowatt draw from the grid? And that will determine the size of the battery bank. So we've got to look at the frequency of the peaking events or the grid outages and the duration of them. And then we can establish the size battery bank that we're going to need and the size inverters. Reasonably straightforward. Uh, give us a, a call and we're happy to help you that. But uh, the guys at Supply Partners, um, Wade and Andrew, are extremely good at doing that kind of uh, calculations for you as well. So in a nutshell, with parallel insertion, which is a little bit different from our everyday series insertion, but I wanted to keep it just pointed to one particular subject here. Parallel insertion is going to augment the grid depending on what the reason is that you want that to be augmented, whether it be pricing structures or just capacity structures. We can certainly help you with that. 
Here's a little example of what we've done at our own factory. We have six 20 kilowatt inverters, so we've got 100 and, uh, 120 kilowatts of battery power, along with 240 kilowatt hours of select cell lithium batteries and some about 80 kilowatts of Fronius inverters with 100 kilowatts of PV. And this is allowing us to make sure we don't have to upgrade that uh, grid supply. I'll leave you with a story from our own internal uh, meetings. We, we had a number of new engineers. Um, and quite excitingly, actually, Cellectronic has the biggest R&D department at the moment we've ever had in the company's history. Um, so it's a pretty exciting place to be around. But the conversation was going, we don't have a big enough supply into this building with all the testing they want to do and new products they've got coming, exciting, blah, 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 blah. We need to upgrade the power supply. Uh, they had gone to this wonderful effort of telling us what the cost would be, so return on investment, give it to the CEO, and we looked at it and um, myself and a couple of the other applications engineers said, what are you on? We don't need this. This is what we do day in, day out. Uh, we designed this system and we haven't, we've avoided the significant inf infrastructure upgrade to the grid and, of course, significant dollars. And now we can also run off-grid should we get that situation. In fact, we've had a number of occasions already this year where our manufacturing and complete manufacturing facilities here have been running off the grid. So avoiding any uh, peak capacity restraints from the grid and also giving us an off-grid capacity there as well. So it's been operating very, very, very nicely with 240 kilowatts. We probably just need a little bit more of um, PV on the roof, but that will come in, in phase two. So I hope that that's been of uh, some value to you and uh, we'll be happy taking some questions uh, or otherwise the guys at Supply Partners would be uh, excellent at being able to answer those questions for you. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Lindsay. And uh, as I was listening to Lindsay, it was reminding me of what James was talking about earlier about all the different value stacks. And there was, there was quite a few in there, especially the, the ability to back that up um, and put a, put a value next to backup. So that's fantastic. Thanks, Lindsay. Appreciate that. Uh, we will now move over to Simon Du. Simon is the Commercial Solutions Manager at SunGrow Australia, and he will run us through some of SunGrow's exciting commercial best products. Are you ready, Simon? Uh, Lindsay, could have you? Yeah, you've unshared. Simon, you want to share your screen, my friend, and come on in? Yes, yes. Thank you. Can everybody see my screen now? You're good to go. Okay, great. Um, hey everyone, it's, um, Simon Du. Um, I'm in charge of the sales and solution here. Um, so um, I would like to start my presentations um, with how who is Sangro. So for those guys who don't know Sangro, um, which I doubt it, but like uh, uh, we we are we are the world's most bankable inverter brands, um, and we have a hundred percent bankable for four consecutive years. For some of the CNI uh, project, uh, when, once it became to um, um, like in sequence, um, you kind of want to seek of a finance help. And that when that time comes, uh, you will need that uh, bank abilities. Um, and also we have existing footprints across the whole globe. At APAC alone, we have 26 service points and 14 local warehouses. In Australia, we have two warehouses and also we have a uh, uh, Philippine call center, call centers, and also in house we have uh, around fifty people, which I will come um, later on. We are the world's largest inverter manufacturer um, um, as well, so uh, we deliver um, three hundred five gigawatts per year um, global uh, productions, and overseas factory about twenty gigawatts per year. Um, in Australia, last year we doing uh, we, we delivered batteries around four hundred to four hundred fifty megawatt hours. Um, this is um, this is the global um, you know um, thanks for IHS um, is actually giving us the number ones in the solar uh, inverter manufacturing, and we shipped uh, the the top volume as well and forty seven plus gigawatts of the inverters. Um, and um, more than two, like it's around 2.9 gigawatt um, hours of um, uh, best as well. So in Australia, we have 50 employees and, and we are number one in the residential. So we're tier ones in the CNI uh, as well, um, just because we don't have like uh, very 
uh, you know, solid market uh, insights for the CNI at the moment. Um, well, there, why, why Sangro have this achieved this success? So we cross cross all different um, options. So um, at the basic, we have monitoring. And second levels, we have a residential products, which you, uh, most of you are already familiar with. For CNI, we have these, um, you know, solar, um, you know, SHI-110CX. Um, we also have the 129CP and 500, 535 CPs series, which I will be focused on today. Uh, for the utility, uh, we do have a range of products, which I'm going to skip um, uh, for, for now. Um, this is uh, the project list that we done um, um, last year. So it's added together will be more than uh, 800 megawatt hours, but like not all, every every project's delivered, but uh, you can see the big numbers um, come across and we participate in the hardest GPS uh, in the hardest network. So um, you and granted a lot of uh, um, um, accomplished uh, on the GPS as well. Um, for CNI, um, um, we kind of um, have two series. So one is the 129 series, which represents the 100 kilowatt hours, 50 kilowatts each um, products. Um, um, it can rack up to six units. And another one is 535 um, um, uh, kilowatt hours and together with 250 kilowatts. So we're using the same PCS here. So 50 kilowatts um, times five, will be fitting into this uh, big cabinet. Um, the bottom one is a liquid cooling batteries, um, like a, uh, very different to the air cooling ones. They have, uh, it will have uh, efficiency improvements. Um, one last thing is on the 500 CPs, because it's big enough, uh, we have this transformer um, to, to, be, to, to, to add it on top if you go with off-grid solution. Um, so this isolation transformer will we are individual cabinet. And the EMS 3000 uh, is just barely uh, a monitoring systems, um, which have some basic function like charging, discharging, uh, time of usage, uh, you know, that kind of control. But like um, we, we still require uh, third party controllers to be on top um, and overseeing the entire site. Um, this is. Um, this, uh, this which I just covered, uh, which on the left is two two hour system, hundred kilowatt hours, uh, fifty kilowatts. On the right hand side, we can enlarge it, uh, double the battery bank, make it four hours. And um, this page is just telling you uh, you can choose from um, a maximum six units in parallel on the off grid range. On the on grid range, you can go you know um, twenty maximum. But you won't you won't uh, go you won't want to go too much uh, because um, we have 250 um, 500 kilowatt hours uh, to cover the bigger applications. Um, this is what it looks like inside. You have the battery cabinet, have a switch, switch, switch gears, and also transformer inbuilt for the smaller version uh, uh, of the um, of the solutions and uh, this air cool system. Um, it's IP six fifty four means all door rated. And also we have this uh, anti-corrosion painting C5, which means you can install the system as close to as a seashore for 500 meters. And it's Australian standard compliant. Uh, so same with the PCS. Um, I can, we'll, we'll temperature windows from 30 degrees to 50 degrees. Easy to ship, um, you know, seven side of this two hour unit will, will be put into the 30 ton truck and it's easy to install as well as just um, using the forklift. Here are some videos I, I just want to show you uh, very quickly. This is what this looks like, a live systems um, on the testing on site at the moment. So um, um, this is what it looks like. And inside, in the middle, that's the rubber tube for firefighting systems. And once the temperature go over 100 degrees, it will just release the firefighting materials and put down the fire. This is some UPS systems, some switches as well um, for internal switch. Is an HVAC system for aircon. This is just an internal UPS um, for um, power. Um, I will jump onto the 500s, which share the same concept. Um, like 
two-hour solutions on the left, a uh, four-hour solution on the right. Um, this is just a basic um, layout, which uh, I will share the PowerPoints later on. Um, so it's not intended for you to look at at the moment. And um, it's same rate, uh, same for everything except the anti-corrosion grading, but uh, you, you have an option to upgrade it to C5. This is the isolation transformer. Uh, also C5 of optional, um, same rating with the PCS. This is a test unit in HQ in China. Um, so it's liquid cooling system. So all the, uh, there is a, um, this is the PCS side. This is the battery side. You can, um, you can see this is a file of the PCS unit, um, like rack it up together. And um, uh, I think there will be a one, more. I probably want to stop here because uh, the time constraint, but um, on the, look at the left side, which is the batteries. This is on the top left, top to left um, corner is the liquid cooling unit where they have the input and output for the flux and um, goes through all these cells um, you know, his cell rack, the same, this, this cell, those cell rack is exactly the same module we use in the utility scale systems. So we, we actually bring the utility solutions um, um, down, down to the CNI range. Um, sorry about the mess of, of the cable is still, um, you know, it's, it's just a shooting a photo of testing um, on, the, on the testing phase, but we already have the live project in Australia now. Uh, sorry, this is the cloud demo, um, um, cloud monitoring demos. Um, I feel free to click the link and, and type in the password and give it a look. Um, but those um, those monitoring that we recommend to go is uh, smaller than five megawatt hours and PV capacity is smaller than six, just because we have another equipment uh, available on the bigger solution. Um, wh why we purchase the CNI batteries? Um, I guess uh, James already answered um, most of the um, parts, so I won't go deep um, on this part. Um, basically, we can do whatever um, it requires um, on the um, uh, as long as you have the third party controller um, in place um, to actually control our systems to finish up these functions. Our system will barely just uh, respond to your controls, but with a very quick manner, uh, our response time will be around 20 milliseconds. Oh, sorry, 200 milliseconds. This is standard layout, um, uh, which is you have load and meter um, and generators um, and where every, everyone just who come uh, on the same bus. Um, on the AC bus and also on the model bus as well. Um, there's a various, various streams um, discussions going on. Um, so for us, obviously on, on the grid interaction uh, part, we have a behind meters and front meters um, various streams uh, can, which can be benefit from. And on the off-grid side, we have these uh, off-grid power supplies, genset friendly functions where we can um, you know, using the, utilize the BSG functions and mimic the generators um, uh, inertia, so which very, very um, uh, friendly to existing generating sites and microgrid. And also we have the black thrust um, functions where, um, um, where rarely you, you will see uh, 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 systems uh, can provide um, like a blast stack functionalities for even your big, even the power turbines, um, sorry, power up the turbines to restart. Um, last but not least, Sangro not only sell equipment, we also provide on-site commission service and also provide our O&M's ongoing service for less span of the warranty. Um, some case studies, uh, Queensland, 100 kilowatts, um, rooftop solar, um, together with um, 129 kilowatt hours, uh, 50 kilowatts in batteries, everything um, you know protected by the bolas um, around the corner of the car park. Uh, this is another one, uh, it's 200 kilowatt, 200 kilowatt um, roughly PV solar on the on the on the roof, which together with um, um, like. Uh, our solution, which is 150 kilowatts, 606 kilowatt hours. That's a four hour solution. That's utilized six of the batteries and three of the PCS. So the technical parts, I want to just emphasize on this. Um, so we can go with multiple 
um, multiple uh, PCSs in parallel. We can also have high voltage drive through, um, low voltage drive through. Uh, we can go, uh, you know, with some power quality, both wire and volts outputs. And also we have these VSG functions and fast response. Uh, I will, I will just lastly go into the fire suppression systems logics. Um, well, where we have these inbuilt fire protection systems, uh, which can work with external fire protection panels. Um, for, if for, for any customers have the requirements to comply with AS1670, that will be the, uh, you know, uh, 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 like an interface for us to integrate with external uh, third party P, uh, fire protection panel. Thank you very much. I will hand back to you. Um, Thank you, Simon. That's fantastic. So many options there with SunGrow. My Lord, we have, uh, we have been working with SunGrow for quite some time and we have, a, we have a best out in the field as well that we, we did use your services to help commission, which was excellent. And thank you. Uh, thank you for that presentation and for all the innovation that you guys are continuing to do. It's, it's really, really great. I'm going to pass over to AT now, who's going to also just quickly run through a few other products that we have for this space uh, that uh, our participants would be interested in, in knowing about. AT? Thanks, Wade, and thanks, everybody, for sticking around. Um, I want to run through um, some exciting new products from BYD and Goodwe, two brands you'd be very familiar with and unfortunately couldn't make it today. So I won't take up too much of your time before we get into the uh, Q&A. So we'll just share the screen yep. now. Yeah, yep. we're good to go. Yep. All right, so looking at the BYD front, um, we're seeing a lot of popularity with the low voltage flex five kilowatt hour modular battery. This was recently made officially compatible with the uh, 48 volt SP Pro inverters, and you'll now find them in the SP Link software. They are scalable up to 64 modules in parallel to deliver up to 320 kilowatt hours of storage. They can be rack mounted or you can uh, install them into the BYD Flex cabinet you'll see there at the top left. Now, BYD has been a strong brand in the Australian market for many years. I think I first used their 2.5 kilowatt hour modules maybe about seven or eight years ago, which you can actually still buy and order today. Um, however, in the last six months, we've seen just massive growth from BY BYD, and this is definitely helped by their strong presence and just the awesome reception of their EVs in the market. So there's now about 14 BYD dealerships across Australia. And personally, I probably see a BYD on the drive to work each day. So that's helping a lot more of these jobs get across the line. Whereas before, maybe they weren't too familiar with the brand. There are some exciting new products on the horizon for BYD. So we'll keep you posted on these. Now, good we. Goodwe has a lot of commercial energy storage products on the horizon. I'm going to run you through a few of those now. The, the most exciting one that oh, I, I've been most excited about is the new larger three-phase hybrids. So in the market, um, typically the largest three-phase hybrid size you'd be familiar with is 10 kilowatt three-phase. And if you want to achieve larger storage, um, it's, you then have to parallel hybrids together, which can be messy, maybe engaging a third-party company. And then as well, it can mean segregating all your backup loads, which, which can be quite messy. So the new ET series from Goodwe solves that issue. Um, it's available in 15 and 29.9 kilowatt varieties. There will be other sizes in between, such as a 20, 25, but we don't have plans to bring them in at this stage. Um, so some of the key features is you've got your 10-year warranty, inbuilt isolator, the PV can be oversized 150%. So as an example, if you have a customer that you want to achieve around 45 kilowatt of PV, rather than installing, let's say, a 40 kilowatt of inverter capacity entering grid protection territory, consider putting a 29.9 kilowatt three-phase hybrid with a small battery. That'll allow you to oversize the PV 150% and still claim STCs. Now, one of the most impressive aspects 
um, especially of the larger 29.9 kilowatt model, is that it can achieve uh, pretty impressive backup abilities. So basically 10 kilowatt per phase of backup potential and it has a, a small surge at 36 kilowatt three phase for up to 60 seconds. So if you're using at the moment a 10 kilowatt three phase hybrid and you're paralleling these together, typically what that'll mean is realistically you're limited to about 3.3 kilowatt per phase of backup ability, which which doesn't quite cut it in a lot of cases. Now, at the moment, these new larger hybrids are suitable for sites with a main switchboard rating of 120 amp. The reason for this is it comes with an energy meter in the box that has 120 amp CTs. And at this time, good we don't have an energy meter that will allow you to um, use your own larger CTs. However, they're working on this. At the moment, it's compatible with the Lynx Home F HV batteries, the stackable batteries from Goodwee, as well as the BYD HVS and HVM you'd be very familiar with, especially if you do a lot of Fronius. Um, the 29.9 kilowatt model, interestingly, has two battery inputs, and each battery input can handle 50 amp of charge and discharge current. So as, as an example, if you're familiar with BYD HVS and HVM, you'd know that you can parallel three stacks together or three towers together. So having the two battery inputs on that larger hybrid means you could parallel three towers into one input and three towers into the other. So there's a positive and negative uh, inputs times two, as well as two comms ports. What this can also mean as well is maybe your customer adds a battery today, let's say a BYD battery, and then maybe they want to expand in a couple of years' time, but maybe that battery is not available anymore. So they could actually have an entirely different brand battery into the second battery input. Now the 15 kilowatt model only has one battery input. Now, at the moment, unfortunately, you can't daisy chain these. I'm hoping that Goodwee is working on this because that, that'll mean a pretty impressive system. Now, I mentioned the Lynx Home F stackable Goodwee battery. Um, this has actually been in the market, I believe, since the end of last year. 10-year product warranty, outdoor rated. Um, and one of the coolest things about this particular stackable battery is that you can parallel up to eight towers together. So that can give you um, 131 kilowatt hours of storage. Or if, for example, you were um, connecting to that 29.9 kilowatt hybrid, you could put eight towers into one input and eight towers into the other. And the awesome thing about this is the way that it's wired. It's a bit different to some of the other uh, stackable battery options out there. So what you're actually doing is you're going uh, out from one stack into another. So ultimately you're only bringing like one, one pair um, of uh, battery cables back to the inverter. So you don't actually need an external combiner box to com combine all the positive and negative feeds from the batteries. So that's a, a cost saving. Now, another product that's quite impressive, this is already CEC approved, is the Goodwee BTC and ETC. So you have the 50 kilowatt three phase AC coupled retrofit device and the 50 kilowatt three phase hybrid. Now this, this product here is probably better suited to uh, small to medium commercial sites. Um, they've got a five year product warranty. They're indoor rated. Now the BTC is pretty much identical to the ETC product, except the BTC doesn't have any solar terminals on it. So the BTC is, let's say you've got a customer with hundred kilowatt of existing solar. You can simply AC couple the BTC device with some storage um, and then start capturing their excess solar. Now it comes with a GM3000C energy meter, which allows you to pair it with five amp secondary CTs. So it's not an issue, um, like depending on the, the main switch current rating, you can just simply size the CTs to suit. Great for peak load shaving. The ETC model with the solar inputs, it's a single tracker. You can connect up to eight strings. Now, um, if you're familiar with Fronius and designing um, systems with Fronius inverters, a lot of those inverters, the Eco series only have a single tracker. Um, however, that doesn't mean you could, you're only limited to one orientation. So very often you'll have a north, east, west parallel. So the single MPPT is, isn't a problem in the designs I've come across. So this is compatible with the Goodwee Lynx C type batteries. So this is their new CNI storage solution. It comes with a five year product warranty and 10 year performance warranty. You can, for a slight um, additional fee, increase the product warranty to 10 years. I believe it's around 10% more. It's indoor rated. It looks aesthetically very similar to the BTC and ETC that it would be sitting next to. 
and you can actually parallel up to three towers together to get you up to 468 kilowatt hours of storage. It has the black start capability um, and all of these batteries I've just spoken about, the BYD, the Goodwe um, batteries, all use the LFP chemistry, which is known to be quite safe. Um, it also has, as, as uh, one of my customers I recently quoted as well, um, the forklift pockets as well. Um, that's one aspect a lot of people don't consider is we've got an awesome um, system with orchestra to help um, getting these sales across the line. We can support you with designing the systems, but there's a lot of thought that we'll need to go into getting some of these systems into their finished location. So here's just some specs and showing you um, at the inside of the cabinet. Um, so with this Link C type series, the smallest option is 101 kilowatt hours. So that pairs quite nicely with the 50 kilowatt three phase hybrid um, and um, one cabinet can go up to 156 kilowatt hours. And just remembering you can have up to four of the, uh, sorry, up to three of those in parallel. All right, so that's the latest from BYD and Goodwe. Um, and now we'd like to get into the q and I can see a few of those have come through. Yeah, fantastic. We also, I, I also see that Lindsay Hart has had an upgrade. <laughs> Welcome, Layla. Hello. Yes, he's had to go pack, catch a plane. Okay. Well. So I'll try to fill the big shoes. We appreciate you. And if there's any questions, we will we will come to you. Um, so let's start at the top then. Andrew. If if we we might just go to there was one question that came through first that I marked as answered. And now that was, sorry, I'll just change this one. Now this one's directed to James at Orchestra. Orchestra has been talking about EV charges for a while. Will you be implementing dynamic control modeling anytime soon? Yes. <laughs> um, we're just, you know, constantly got so many different things that we're trying to build for. The roadmap is, is a massively full, but we've just recently made the decision to try and get some dynamic control for EV chargers into the tool um, in the next sort of four to five months. Um, so we've got some other stuff that needs to come first before we get to that. But yeah, we're, we're so conscious of just the dying need to get um, proper EV charging, uh, charger modeling happening in Australia. There's just not good um, options out there for modeling this. You really have to be doing it in Excel today. So yeah, we're definitely gonna have this, um, this coming in around Q3. Awesome. All right, so next one up. Any advice on contracts and estimates based on demand reduction in the case of a product failure, resulting in demand charges being applied for a whole quarter based on the battery being out of action for a day or two? I think this one's for me as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah demand charges, yeah, they're a fickle thing. Um, so there, as far as I'm aware, there's no quarterly reset demand charges in Australia, so you really fall into the camp of, of monthly or in annual. Um, so a lot of there's a lot of annual ones in Victoria, um, but otherwise they're, um, they typically tend to be monthly. Um, in our tool, look, we need to do some more work on this. I think this is something that I think Orchestra has got in really well placed to, to do some, some really high quality analysis in here. Right now it's sort of be a manual process of looking at a particular month and extracting that out and saying, well, in the worst case, you'd lose all the demand savings for this particular month. So what would that do to your, to your change? Like, how would that change your IRR? Um, so yeah, I can I can work with anyone who wants to work on this. I can um, happily sit and um, show them how they'd be able to do that with the tool. Um, but yeah, like realistically, what you should be doing is is doing some kind of stochastic modelling. Um, we'll get to this for sure. It's something that um, regularly comes up as a feature. Um, so yeah, watch this space. Mm. It would be a, a challenging thing to predict over the life of the battery systems. And yeah, I mean, what, yeah. That, that's why. So you need to do it stochastically. You need to basically add, you know, randomly, um, you know, determine over a whole period, like over the whole battery life, if mm. you, you know, model it, you know, randomly um, have an outage across the, you know, the um, for all the batteries and um, what was the potential reduction that you might see from demand across it? Because sure. it's not always going to be an issue, right? So if you've if mm. you're um if you've got an outage at you know, 11 o'clock at night because there's a tree that's gone over a power line somewhere and, the, and then suddenly it goes out and mm. you're, you're managing demand in the middle of the day. It's not really a problem. It's really a problem when you have that unlucky co um, confluence of, of, you know, the peak, uh, peak demand and then suddenly the, um, you know, you need to, to manage for that demand and the battery's out and, mm. you know, so like it's, it's, yeah, it's it's a kind of like it's an edge case that you need to manage for for, mm. for sure when you're talking with your customers and we can kind of like 
help you to work out what that might be um, with Sounds the software. Like extended but smoke over time for me. <laughs> down tools. Yeah, down tools. <laughs> but yeah, it's like it's you know it's something that you know we'll, we'll have to get to at some point. I no, thank you. I will give a shout out to the uh, Power Plus Escape Twenty and Escape Thirty series who've built those systems to be uh, quite redundant. Um, I believe the inverters and batteries are all hot swappable. So yep. if you uh, if one develops a failure point, that shouldn't bring the whole system down, and you can actually slide it out, slide the new one in. Is that correct, Craig? Oop. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it's correct, Andrew. So they're a hot swappable modular product, so the system can keep being powered uh, while you're pulling them out and putting them back in. And the beauty of about the uh, about the product as well is you don't have to reprogram them. You just put the new module back in. The cluster reprograms that unit to to suit the system, and away you go. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So next on the list with demand charges, how are they generally charged, and over what time limit? What are the better batteries for fast discharging to do this? Oh, look, I'll take the first part of that question. I think the second part of that question might be for you guys. Um, so uh, with demand charges, uh, we've got like 180 different demand tariffs in the country. Every single one is different. Um, they're all in orchestra. You can model them all in there. It's literally a click of a button and you can swap from one demand tariff to another to, to be able to do it. Um, yeah, you'll have demand um, tariffs which are... Re have annual resets, like I said before. So something like Gemini will have an annual reset and you'll be charged for um, the peak on any time of the day. Um, and to the other end of the spectrum where you'll have um, something like Essential Energy where it'll have a three-rate demand tariff, a peak, shoulder and off-peak, and there'll be windows of time that apply for each of those different um, demand charges and the peak will apply between, you know, five and eight in the evening. So, um, yeah, there's no there's no rules of thumb for this, I'm afraid. You've, you've really got to get down in the detail and um, and model each site individually if you want to understand how the demand charges affect that site. Now, what are the better batteries for fast discharging to do this? Um, in in my kind of understanding, all of the all the batteries that we sell today in uh, Power Plus, um, SunGrow and, and Selectronic, I guess, can all be designed to meet these applications and using Orchestra, it'll make it a lot easier. Um, yeah. Wade, do you have anything? Well, you're also limited by the inverter. Right. Yeah. The the inverter will a lot of the times limit what you can what you can discharge. Um, so you can yeah it, you have to look at both sides of it. So most exactly what you said. Most of the batteries can handle the the PCS, and you just got to make sure that one of them isn't limiting the other one. Yeah, that's a good, really good point. Is that like when we think about. Um, uh, particularly commercial value stacks, it's the the ones that are really good at doing doing power functions that are going to be really good for these applications. Um, you know, you don't actually need a lot of lithium, right? Like a one hour battery for power functions is actually pretty good. Um, and yeah, that battery is going to work really hard. But it's um, you, you, the second hour is actually pretty lazy mm -hmm. in many cases because you might be managing for quite a small peak, and you might never actually get to that second second hour of use. Um, the same goes for, you know, for wholesale market arbitrage. You want to dump as much energy as you can, as quickly as you can, into that short window of those really critically high peak prices. And so, you know, you want to be able to, you don't necessarily need a lot of lithium for that, for that particular application. Thank you. All right. How do we and customers get access to the FCAS benefit? Yeah, this is a really good question. Um, yeah, it's it's not as simple as the other 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 parts of the ballast stack. There's absolutely no doubt about this. You're going to need um, a party that acts as an intermediary to the market. So with wholesale market arbitrage, you can set up a a um, what's called an on-market child meter. It's using the embedded network frameworks to basically give that battery um, direct access to the wholesale market and trading into the wholesale market while still providing the network benefits back to the to, back to the main site. Um, and you can do that without having to engage the retailer that's currently there on the site, you can. It's all kind of like neatly done within the within the regulations. FCAS is a slightly different scenario because it involves metering the um, for FCAS at the gate meter. So for the whole site, um, you're going to need an aggregator to participate in the market. So there's a few aggregators that are in the market today. Evergen is a good example of. Um, uh, an aggregator that's providing services into the commercial industrial space. Um, Momentum Energy is providing services here. Um, Flow Power is providing services here. Shell Energy, um, NLX, um, there's quite a few. 
Um, and it's definitely worth doing your research as to like which one is the best fit for you. They all have a slightly different way that they approach this, um, but it's not something that um, unless you're building an extremely large battery um, that you can just go and tap into on your own, you'll want to be part of a, of a group, um, an aggregator's uh, VPP solution to, to get access to it. Thank you. I might get some feedback from some of the other uh, manufacturers too. Now, uh, Craig, um, Escape 10 with the Selectronic built-in um, and then your Escape 20 and 30, they all have switched in inbuilt. So I take it there's there's a few reasons for that, tunneling it in, um, I guess getting all the data from all the different products together on one platform. But is that kind of long-term planning for take, taking part in these sorts of, um, I guess, markets? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Switched In is uh, already playing the VPP market and sort of set up for that. They they deal with all of the uh, the, the integration and the the contracts that are required with anybody that wants to play in, uh, for all the re retailers or utilities that want to play in that market. Uh, and we just tap in on the back end of it. So, um, you know, our batteries, um, AFGAS is usually a rapid deployment of energy, uh, usually very, very, very quickly. So you need a power battery. Um, our batteries are an energy battery, so we would stay away from an FGAS market, but definitely pay in uh, more of an energy market where it's just the sharing of energy um, through the network of the VPP platform. Okay. And the product that the switched in gives us ample other things as well, including uh, things like uh, looking at the system uh, and looking where it may be not performing as well as it should be um, and alerting the end users at the same time or, or, or the uh, fleet managers. So would your recommendation be if, a, if someone was going down the path of an Escape 20 or Escape 30, um, they should maybe reach out to switched in to see um, what sort of uh, companies they have relationships with and, and connect them or...? They could reach out to us and we'll be able to yep. do that information through. Uh, but Switched In also offer the service that uh, once we've, I guess, sold the product and the client may want to engage further, Switched In uh, will take over that part of the conversation at the same time because they enter into the agreements with them all. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Simon, do you have any comments to add on uh, the SunGrow C&I um, in FCAS situations? Well, we have some live case undergoing on Chainset Parks together with Shell and uh, um and also there is some other, uh, you know, uh, controllers we, we are playing together um, to, to deliver that um, better streams to the end customers. Um, I guess uh, for us, um, as I said, like we are just focusing what we do best. It's just manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do provide some unique uh, functions uh, which can enable these self uh, capabilities uh, from this, uh, from the work to work together with the site controllers, but minimum um, uh, require minimum um, uh, signals from the third party controllers send it to us. Um, mm. uh, we will achieve the quick response um, um, and deliver a full six markets uh, FCAS better stream. So. Okay. And this, this could be a conversation they have, I guess, if if they're quoting um, a third-party EMS, perhaps it's through ComApp, PM Control, Mondo, probably the first three to come to mind. Um, that could be a discussion they have with the EMS provider. Um, yeah. That, that's right. That's right. Or you can treat, reach to us. I'm, I'm happy to uh, you know, guide you through. Sure. Um, now, as far as Selectronic goes, am I right in believing that pr you probably can't take part in the FCAS market? You can't, you don't want to export the, the battery energy to the grid. Is that correct, Leila? It's not that we don't want to. It's yeah. that we've yeah. been pushed out of that. We're very capable. It's something that we are used to do. Yeah. Um, but with the changes to AS4777, we're sitting in a different category these days. Um, standalone Grid Connect. Do you, do you foresee that changing in the, in the near future? Are you, are you fighting it or are you kind of focusing more on the peak lopping and large-scale off-grid? What's your long-term plan there? Yeah, look, I uh, think at this point in time, yes, we're focusing on um, other ways that we can support the grid, you know, real-world backup, whole of business, whole of home, um, peak lopping and, yeah, larger-scale off-grid. Absolutely. Um, doesn't mean that we won't, uh, you know, try and fight this in the future. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we are very well placed with our product um, to um, help with FCAS and other other areas where battery discharge into the grid is required. Mm. Awesome. Thanks, Leila. All right. Um, now this is, when, the, when you say small, okay, how do you get wholesale trade benefit for small size PV and BESS? 
aggregator is active in the market. I'm, I'm not entirely sure when you say small size, um, are you referring to like large residential? Um, I, oh, I think this is basically anything which is behind the meter could qualify into this. Um, the same is true. So there's a few different ways that you can do it. One is that you um, would go and find an aggregator like Evergen or Switched In probably can support this as well. That was never mentioned before. Um, Momentum Energy, um, Flow Power, they all have solutions for this. Um, again, you're looking at... Um, having a, a child meter um, connected in, into the site, on-market child meter, and then providing uh, that gives access for these um, these solutions to have uh, access to the wholesale market while not affecting the um, the gate meter and the main of the whole site. Mm. Um, there's also some really interesting, funky solutions um, for PV and, um, and giving them access to the wholesale market as well. So... Uh, worth having a chat to Metropolis and South Street Energy around their solutions to this because they've got some some really neat solutions for for, um, for PV in this space as well. So, um, yeah, this is like there's multiple different solutions um, that are available to this. Orchestra basically defaults that if you want to give the um, you want to trade um, in the wholesale market and the site doesn't have wholesale market exposure, we automatically apply the child meter concept into the um, into the way that it's modelled, um, and that's how we you know get our results um, in this particular situation. I see this sort of uh, trading as well as making its way into the residential space. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen, but look it up. Um, solar Quotes did a very good article on this where they shared their experience with a, a large household solar and battery system for about 12 months. And then for the next 12 months, they used uh, Am- the retailer Amber. Mm-hmm. So they could actually pay wholesale electricity prices. It it controlled their system. So basically during the daytime when the price went into negative, it would tell their system, do do not export. If you export, it will actually cost you money. Um, so that intelligence it's, is making its way into the residential space. So we should start seeing a lot more. Yeah, of it. absolutely. I mean, that's a really good example of, of solutions that are out there. And there's other solutions as well, like um, Energy Locals. So Energy Locals did their, their VPP with, um, with Tesla in South Australia. They be they were the intermediary to the to the VPP, so they sort of captured all the value um, at the retailer level, and then they just passed a single low low rate on to the to the final customer. Um, these types of solutions, I mean, that's that's how um, many of the big guys are starting to think about their solution as well. So Shell Energy's got a similar approach where they'll kind of incorporate the VPP value into the retail contract and then provide a single low rate. So it's um, yeah, these are these are um, yeah, there's lots of different ways to to skin the cat here. Um, What we've tried to do as a a business is provide a means of kind of um, revealing that value. Um, We've also got a feature called Business Model Builder that allow you to kind of apply these different business models over the top and kind of understand how they function and and how the different value will pass to the different parties involved, be it the end customer, an aggregator, a financier, or the solar installer up front. Um, And that's, you know, that can kind of help to reveal how to explain these solutions Mm -hmm. to, to a customer. Yeah. Now, this one I think might actually be for someone else other than Orchid this time. Um, (laughs) Simon, a question for Simon regarding the Sungo product. I'm trying to understand the usage case for an isolation transformer. What does it do? When is it needed? You mentioned off-grid. Oh, yes. Um, So um, isolation transformer just uh, is not the step up of step down transformer. It's just purely acting like uh, isolations. So... Um, it, it changed the wires actually. So um, for some reason, um, well, very very well known reasons, the, the the PCS or inverters are using topologies based on um, you know the delta wires um, because it's easy to control and blah blah blah. Um, um, added the transformer on top will change that delta wires to star. Hence, you will you will have this uh, neutral uh, cable coming out and for your for your um, ordinary loads that's that's how um, why you need a, or in off grids why you need an isolation transformer thank you simon um now are there any other questions we've answered everything in the question box um don't be shy um you can ask anonymous anonymously if you need um well we're at three thirty. i think we did pretty darn good on our time oh yep sorry uh, we are at 3.30, well, 3.33. We're three minutes over, but I thought we did pretty damn good with our time. I just really want to thank everybody for for 
logging in and, and viewing this webinar and showing interest in this exciting, exciting commercial energy storage uh, space. And I want to thank Craig from Power Plus, Lindsay slash Layla from Selectronic, Simon from SunGrow, and James, thank you for flying all the way up here from Hobart, from Orchestra, and thank you all. And uh, please reach out to um, either myself or Andrew at Supply Partners if you have any questions. Uh, if you did sign up for this, as you would, because you are in here, you will receive a recording of this. And uh, I'm sure Luke will be sending this out to all of our customers as well and putting it on all the socials. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Andrew, before we sign off? No, that's everything. It went very well. Thank, Thank you very you much, again. guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks very much. Thank you. See ya. Thanks, everyone. See you later.